Welcome to the next episode of my RANS S21 build. You may have noticed I cut my hair. Uh, in this episode, I'm going to be talking about the panel design. For most of the episode, I'm going to be sitting in front of my screen, uh, explaining, showing SolidWorks, uh, the CAD program I was using to design, kind of explaining some of the features of the panel and, and what I went with for the design. Uh, but if you hang around to the end, uh, I do some CNC cutting of test pieces, check the fit, make sure that everything was drawn up correctly, uh, and I get those installed into the uh, cockpit. I'm getting really close to finishing up my panel design using SolidWorks for this. I haven't shot a whole lot of video during this process because honestly, there's just not a whole lot to show. Um, but this is my, probably my fifth iteration of the panel and I believe I am really close if not uh, finally got the the final version here there's a few components I'm waiting on there's a there's a uh, start button or a start switch for the engine start that I, I ju it just came in today I need to model that up and make sure that's all gonna fit in there um, there is a USB got two USBs. This is a power. This is the Garmin, uh, this one here, Garmin uh, GSB-15. It's their A, USB-A and USB-C unit. These are expensive, but I'll tell you what, you don't want to use cheap Amazon uh, USB for power. Um, the, the, the cheap Chinese ones are very noisy, and you're very likely to get buzzing and all sorts of things in your comm audio and, and other types of interruptions with other equipment. So spend the money and get a proper TSO'd USB. Don't go cheap on that. Um, this here is the USB for my displays, for my left and right displays. And that will be for uh, uploading data and, and updating them. Uh, that one is just basically just an extension cable. I did get that on Amazon, but there's, uh, there's no power running through that. So um, anyways, this is it. Uh, center stack is, I've got the autopilot head. I've got Dynon's knob head here, just for quick adjustments of the heading, uh, barometric pressure and altitude. Uh, these are for your autopilot. This of course is just for your uh, altimeter. We've got a uh, Garmin GTR 200B comm. I love this comm. I have this in my Cessna right now. And I like that it's got the integrated um, stereo intercom with Bluetooth. Pretty cool. Uh, down below here are, I like to have, I'll have push to talk button on my control stick, of course, but I've had those go bad sometimes. And then you're, you've got no way to transmit. You can go into the menu here and make one of these buttons on the Garmin Com be a push to talk button. Uh, it's a programmable button, but I like to use the uh, just a, a dedicated separate button for pilot push to talk and co-pilot push to talk. Just in a rare case where for some reason my stick button quit working, I could just come up here and, and push that. The discrete buttons, discrete one and two, these are, you can program these to do di different things with the Com radio. So you might use it to cycle through your uh, memories, as an example, which is what I use one of them for on my Cessna. And the other one, you can program it to do other things. Uh, dimmer, I don't have the dimmer yet. I'm still waiting to get that. I got to model that up, but that will probably go there. Cam record, I'm doing a dedicated button to start and stop recording cameras on the airplane, the uh, GoPros. And I'm working on a, another project, a camera controller uh, with my cousin who is kind of my uh, software engineer guy and, and embedded systems guy we're working on uh, a pretty slick little unit that just with one push of a button uh, you'll start recording all the cameras and these buttons they don't show them here but these buttons do have a, an led ring a light ring around them so in the case of the cam record you'd push that and it would start blinking giving you a visual confirmation that all your cameras are recording. It's just handier than trying to use the GoPro app with, you know, trying to do it remotely and that's just a mess. This way, one touch, boom, all cameras are going. That's pretty cool. Uh, that won't be functional for a while, but I wanna make sure that that button is there. 
Uh, I've got some breakers across here and a couple ox one and ox two. I don't know what they're for. Uh, they're, I'm sure I forgot something and I wanna have breakers available in case there's something that I haven't thought of or in case I wanna add something later on. Some of these, so my switches here, I'm using toggle switches. Some of these I'm going to maybe use switch breakers so I don't have to have a dedicated breaker for them. Um, that could free up some breakers up here. Again, if I want to add something in the future and I need a breaker, uh, that will give me the opportunity to do that. So I haven't fully decided on the arrangement of that yet, but at least I have all the positions here for breakers and quite a few for switches here. Then it's just uh, the Dynon 10-inch uh, here, Dynon 10-inch here. Uh, up here I have I went ahead and got the uh, dedicated IDENT button. I, I like the idea of being able just to reach up and IDENT rather than have to go in, you know, go into the comm menu or, you know, do the touch screen on the Dynon. Uh, low fuel warning LED. Um, that one, I don't know. With the low fuel on, I believe the battery faults. I'm doing the EarthX batteries and uh, you can receive an indication if the batteries have faulted. I suppose I could have probably wired those into the displays and gotten some alerts there and maybe I can still do that but I just kind of like the idea of a dedicated enunciators right there in my field of view uh, and that's what the, those are just five millimeter uh, red LEDs. Um, I've got my passenger warning placard on this side and I chose to put it there to kind of keep things symmetrical that kind of matches this sub panel uh, here which has got my registration number. Uh, let's talk about over here I've got parking brake I've got cabin heat, uh, ignition on or off for both my ignition systems. I'm doing the light speed, dual light speed ignition. Uh, and of course, master switch here. I put the um, the guards in here. Just I don't want to be accidentally shutting off my ignition if I go to pull cabin heat or something. Probably not likely, but those definitely add a, a level of safety. I've got the eyeball vents. These are in the locations that the RANS manual says to put them in. Uh, seemed like that would be a good spot to put those, kind of puts them down in the corners and gives me room to have everything else. Uh, you'll notice, so I guess let me talk about this. What I did on all of this center stack stuff is it's on its own panel. So this is a three piece panel. I have the pilot side panel goes up to the display just a little bit past it. Uh, center panel and then the co-pilot side. In fact, let me see if I can go with a more straight on view. And you can see the seam line here, it's a separate panel. I have this kind of arrangement in my Cessna also, and I really like the uh, ability to, to pull off, um, rather than have to pull the whole panel, I can just pull off maybe the center stack, get in there, I can maybe even reach around and do things if I need to, or I can you know, pull one side off. I don't have to pull the whole panel off. Or, or try to just pull components and be trying to reach through those holes to get to other things. Um, so I, I went ahead and, and did the same thing there. And then what I did was on the switches and the breakers and the buttons here, those are all their own panels that they mount to. And if we look around the back here, um, in fact, let me open up the center stack panel piece only and you'll see. So I've got big rectangle cutouts for everything. And this is like my autopilot head, my knob uh, head there, comm radio, discrete button, cam record, and so on, breakers and switches. What's nice about this is those are all just uh, openings. And then what I can do is some point later on, let's say, I don't know, let's say I uh, change something up, I can just come over here and I can just change this panel, relabel it, I don't have to worry about you know, how am I going to relabel the panel? If, if I label the panel itself, it, you kind of screw yourself with locking into your design there. This way, um, I just have this panel. It'll be cut from, I don't know, I'm thinking of doing uh, forged carbon fiber. If I don't do that, I'll probably just do a uh, black anodized aluminum and then uh, laser etch these, these markings. But this way, oh, and then these will attach to the panel with M3 screws, and I will press in panel nuts uh, into the panel. I haven't put those, none of that in there yet, but all these holes here are sized to fit press in panel nuts from the back side. That'll fit an M3 screw. So I'll just drive the M3 screws through the, the 
panel here that holds my switches or breakers or whatever in through the main panel into the panel nuts. And this way, these individual components can be unscrewed and taken out and you have a whole block of switches, breakers, and so on. Trying to keep this uh, future-proof and easily serviceable was, were my main goals for this. Uh, let's see, I think that's a, that covers most of it. Um, here's just a little bit of view of the modeling on the backside. <sighs> Garmin, I can't... St <laughs> Dynon is great. They really cater to the home-built community. They have 3D models for almost every product they sell. The only thing I had to model that they didn't have, or at least I couldn't find, was the ident button. Uh, I could not find that, so when I bought it, I just got my calipers out here and measured it all up and modeled it myself. Um, Garmin, the best of my knowledge, does not provide 3D models for any of their products. So I had to get my comm radio up here, get my calipers out and completely model the radio. I had to model the tray. I had to model it all. The downside with that is it's time consuming. And also it is, um, maybe you're not gonna be as accurate because you're, you can't model every single feature, right? I mean, you could, but it would just, it would take way too long. So you kind of have to sacrifice and make a, a generalized version of the model and then hope that it doesn't affect anything where there might be precision needed later. So Garmin, uh, I love your radio, but dude, get with the program for experimental guys and guys that want to open up models in 3D modeling programs. Come on, this is 2023, let's get with the program. So there we go, I have gone on for way too long here. Um, this is my panel. This is, <laughs> even though I have models for all this stuff, um, you still end up, you know, you're printing out all of these drawings, like with the breakers and stuff. Of course, I couldn't find any models for these, so I did have to model all those up. So, you know, you're sitting in here with all your prints and your drawings and your calipers and and you're, you're just modeling parts. Uh, this is this is kind of how it has to go. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make all of my files uh, available, be open source, make everything available for download once I have finalized the panel design. Once I know that this is what mine's gonna be, I will make all these files available. Anyone could then duplicate that if they so choose. Um, so yeah, there we go. There is my panel design, and soon I'm going to start cutting some test pieces. I'm gonna cut them from G10 first, uh, just some thin G10, make sure my measurements and templating is all correct, and then I'll switch over to the final parts. I haven't decided what that's going to be yet. Uh, for a period of time, I was wanting to do a carbon fiber panel, but I think I've gotten away from that. I think I'm actually gonna go aluminum, and then I'm going to paint the panel or powder coat it this gray. Uh, being that I'm kind of going with this navy theme, paint scheme um this seems i don't know more appropriate for for that look all right i'm back over here in uh, clutter corner this is the side of the hangar that no one has seen or gets to see much because <laughs> i don't come over here and, and do video but i have some equipment over here i've got my lathe over there i've got sandblaster i've got my cnc machine this is where a lot of stuff happens and uh what i just did was well, I was going to start cutting my panels, test panels, just out of some G10 here. Came out here yesterday to do that, and my CNC controller computer died. Now, it was 15 years old, so it had a good run. And actually, the computer was fine. I think it was just the power supply. But I'm like, why am I want to spend 60 bucks on an ATX power supply when I can just upgrade this thing? So I had an old NUC uh, i7 laying around that I used to use for some other stuff. And I uh, just loaded it up and I had to get an adapter USB to serial port because this machine is so old, it communicates with a serial port. But I got all that done and uh, fired it up and it worked. So here is a, here's the center panel. Let me get, let me pop this out. There we go. Shake off some of the dust. So here's the center panel. Let's actually go take a look here. I'll show you where this is gonna go. So basically, that's the panel that's gonna go there. I'll have to move those that Clico there and I'll set it in place. I'll do that now. Everything fits. What I, what I like to do before I do any real panel cutting is cut test panels. And just to make sure that the things are 
drawn right, fitting right, that my drawing is scaled appropriately. Now I just pulled the CAD file from RANS and it does appear to fit. It's, might be off by about 20 thousandths. The holes were just a little off, but that could be my machine. I haven't, I need to go through and check my machine. It is pretty old and it could be having a little bit of backlash, which I can adjust uh, with, with software. Uh, to a certain extent. So I might tweak that, but it's I could leave it as it is and it would actually cut this fine. So here we go. Um, I cut these. Now my test panels, really you want to cut these from a cheaper material than G10, but I have gobs of this leftover from robotic stuff and uh, I'm just going to use it. Normally you might want to use, uh, I don't know, like a 16th inch ABS plastic would be nice and cheap, uh, but whatever. I've got it. I'm going to use it. So now that I got my machine running, I got this cut, I'm going to cut uh, this here, the left side panel and the uh, right side panel and get everything fit in. I'll of course have to remove these, but this is gonna let me verify the fit. And once that's done, then I'm gonna go ahead and start getting ready to cut the real panels. All right, here is the co-pilot side panel. And it should just pop right out. On this one, um, I, I put tabs in to hold these small pieces in. Sometimes I'll do that, because you can see I didn't tape the whole thing. I use double-sided sticky tape. I also use spray glue. It just depends on what I'm doing and what, I, what my mood is for the day. I don't like cleaning up glue, so sometimes the sticky tape is a better way to go. Um, but you don't get full hold down with the sticky tape. So the tabs just kind of help keep it in place and then you just, you just break them out. And then if this was a finished panel, I would clean up those holes with a little file or Dremel. But there we go, beautiful. All right, we're starting to look like something here. Check that out. Now I need to cut this one. I'm gonna pull this skin off temporarily and that way it'll let me get in here and remove these cables, control cables, cabin heat and parking brake, so that I can, after I get this panel cut, I can get that put in place. And there it is. Everything fit perfect. Right now I'm just click going to the aluminum panel. Eventually this aluminum panel won't even be there. It'll just be the panels. Because it's a three piece design, I do have to drill a couple holes here into the uh, panel support piece that aren't there. One there, one there. Um, oh, I'm gonna put one here. I didn't, I didn't draw that, but I'm gonna put one here and one on the other side. So there we go, but everything fit. Um, the supplied DXF by RANS with the overall profile and all the hole uh, placements is spot on. I expected it would be. So what I can do now is go move forward with, uh, I'll take the aluminum panel off and then fit, fit these to it and then start fitting my components in there and making sure that all those fit in the holes. Once I know that's good, then I know that these panel files, the CAD files are good to go.